Well, my second beta test of ESO is over, and it's high time I gave my overall opinion on the beta model. Keep in mind that I've beta and alpha tested many MMOs in the past, and also stuck with quite a few of them. So I have some MMO experience, but no means a hardcore player like some people are. I'll let you watch some random footage from my streams with some appropriate music in the background while you watch this review. The first thing that hits you smack in the face in ESO is this extremely in-depth character creation suite. This was a godsend as there's nothing worse than having an X number of face and body models as you're bound to see doppelgangers all of the time in game. Thankfully, this resolved the issue and allowed us to really sink our teeth into making our characters our own. Once the depth of detail in the creation suite wears off, you'll notice the impressive visuals, which are pretty damn good for an MMO. Although you'll notice this more once you leave Cold Harbor and get to travel the open world in all its glory. The realistic looking water and foliage, and the beautiful skies and weather systems, as well as the day and night cycle, it really is a complete package in that regard. Before this however, you're more likely to notice the voice acting, as you're greeted by the Prophet aka Michael Gambon, well at least I was when I awoke in Cold Harbour when siding with the Admiral Dominion. Anyway, as the Old Republic is my main MMO at this point, it was relieving to realise ESO was fully kitted out with NPC dialogue, which in my experience helps a player relax and immerse themselves into the games, as opposed to reading wall after wall of text. And for the most part, this dialogue is top notch. I only came across a few NPCs that had terrible voice actors, or the voice just didn't match their race. Otherwise, it was a treat, with Gambon, John Cleese, and a few voices I recognise from Skyrim, such as the Jarl of Whiterun. Immediately after this, you get a taste for combat for the first time, and it's slightly different to what most MMO players are used to. It plays like an adventure game, such as Skyrim itself, where your basic attacks are swing, slash fire with the left click, right click to block, and both in unison to interrupt, which is very useful for stopping those damn enemy casts, which are normally an ability slot in the action bar. Speaking of the action bar, it seems we're reduced to only 5 main slots, with an additional slot for your ultimate ability and quick slot items. Once I acquired more than the said 5 abilities, I did feel wanting for my additional slots that I'm used to, especially when I had 3 magical trees being a spell sword, with one physical to boot. Apparently, we get some relief when we ding level 15, as we obtain the ability to swap weapons on the fly, which has its own set of 5 abilities, although this does feel like a compromise. I suppose in a way this would force players to put more thought into what they put into their action bars, maybe adding another layer of skill to the PvP combat, which I'll talk about soon. The quick slot is a nice feature, allowing you to instantly use a consumable with a single stroke, or hold down your binded key for a selection of the items you've added to your list. And then there's a blasted ultimate ability, a system which requires a player to fill up their finesse, highlighted by a rising cooldown effect over the ultimate ability slot, by fighting effectively in combat. Once filled, it allows you to unleash a powerful ability, which is race and class dependent. In my case, I chose a Storm Matronic. Now, with abilities aside, I have to say the combat feels very satisfying. Your basic attacks respond in an instant, and feel like a single player game, with no server lag to speak of, and your abilities also streamline pretty well into the mix, which leaves you looking and feeling like a badass in action. I have to say that this didn't wear off either, combat always felt enjoyable, and not a chore, but then again I'm used to this sort of thing so maybe that's just me. Of course, you'll eventually won't even use your basic attack much at all, as it pales in comparison to the power of your other abilities, which yes, do drain from your magicka and stamina bars, magic and physical respectively. This synergy means you hardly ever run out of action points if used correctly, and is one of the main reasons the combat feels smooth. Although we do get a lovely little bonus, the sneak system. The same one from any recent Elder Scrolls game. This allows you to sneak up behind a mob and give them a decent wallop with your basic attack that can take a sizeable chunk of HP from them, allowing you to dispatch them easily with a follow-up ability. Now I feel it's time to talk about the experience system, which I do have mixed feelings about. From what I gathered, it lends itself from the Skyrim leveling system, where you have abilities that will improve through various methods, such as reading random bookcases, using your abilities to progress instead of abilities, which in turn will increase your skills and eventually level you up. 
Now this is a fine system which I've no problems with, but I'm used to getting a set number of XP per mob and quest. That is why it felt weird. I can no longer simply grind mobs for XP, at least not in the same manner as before. I suppose this could be a good thing, an MMO player needs change from time to time, but I'm still unsure. Branching off from this would be the game's loot system, another area I'm not too fond of. Firstly because most mobs drop nothing but crap, such as one gold, while even a stronger mob may drop four gold. Of course there's always a chance of finding some gear like in any other MMO, but again it's not worth much gold. That annoyed me as if you wander too far and then enter a slightly higher level area and end up dying, the repair bills for armour can be astronomical and the loot won't even cover the cost. Walking off the beaten path may be one's own fault, but I died several times to bugs which caused many enemies to aggro on me at once, again leading to my death and a hefty repair bill. This also leads into the group system, which I found disappointing. Apparently, if 40 players just touch one enemy, it will drop loot for each person, which some may be fine with, but I'm used to a pass, greed, need system and shared loot, so it felt slightly off. And since ESO only has dialogue, not cutscenes, other group members can't enter your conversations, such as they can in the Old Republic, and that's a feature I've come to love over the past few years. At least we have the world exploration and node hunting to make up for the lack of mob loot, which I found strangely addictive in ESO compared to other MMOs I've dabbled in. I found myself hunting the beaches of elsewhere for all veins to mine, racing other players to get them. I realised this was the best way to make gold at my early levels, as ore, bark and hides from bears were worth a sizeable amount to vendors and other players via the chat channel. To be fair though, making money is always addictive in games for me, so that's probably why I love node hunting so much. But you also come across a chest or two from time to time, which introduces you to the brand new lockpick system. And I did see a lot of hate for this in game, mainly because most people found it too hard, but a challenge is always better in my book than something you can just breeze by. No matter what level you are, you have a chance to pick any level lock, and they're mostly easy until you get to a master level one, which are quite fun. You have a system of 5 bolts in the lock, where you need to apply pressure until one starts to shake and then lock it in place. And there's a timer as well to add to the pressure of things. And I did notice the higher level locks are more sensitive to locking the bolts in and can easily snap your lockpicks. So now that you have your materials you can either sell, hoard or craft them. I tried my hand at crafting some armour and weapons and the system does seem pretty solid, although I can't say much on this as I didn't get a lot of time to experiment with it. Same with enchanting and cooking, but I did enjoy the different styles you could apply per item when crafting armour and weapons. Before I moved on to PvP, I did manage to find a strong enemy, maybe it was a boss, it was inside a ruin. She seemed to be a Daedric sorcerer who transformed into a massive serpent once defeated, who seemed to heal off floating orbs. This was a nice challenge having to destroy the orbs before they reached her while letting my familiar bite at her ankles, slowly draining her of health. I was underleveled at the time and not prepared, but I found it extremely fun. Finally, I moved on to PvP, which I believe looks great on paper, but I had no chance to experience the fun for myself, as every single time I tried my hand at it, I was neck deep in lag. So I'll reserve my judgement for PvP until the game goes live, but to be honest it does look fun. So overall, despite several bugs and hiccups along the way, this was a relatively fun experience across the board. I can't promise how long I'll play the final game as that will depend on the state of the PvP and endgame content. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time and don't forget to leave your opinions down below.